All right, howdy, boys and girls. This is Mrs. Dunn. And this is Miss Sorrells. And today we're going to do our first lesson on modeling percents. So this is what our first interactive notebook page is going to have that has written notes. To start us off, we are going to use, do the definition of a percent. So I have a percent written here. It says a percent is a ratio that compares a number to 100. We say percents are out of 100 and can be written with a percent sign. So it's written down in our notebook. That means if you need to, go ahead and pause the video so that you can write it down yourself. And then you can play it again and we'll move on. Okay, so percents. We see percents in the real world. Uh, Ms. Arles, when do you see a percent? I see percents when I'm going shopping and there's a sale. It'll say 25% off. Yes. Is there another place that you can maybe see percents in real world? The weather, if there is um, a 30% chance of rain today. Okay, very good. There's lots of ways that we use percentages. There's a number of ways we can model percents. And one way that we model percents is using a 10 by 10 grid. Now you've seen these 10 by 10 grids before, um, and we're going to use one to start us off. So. Our first example is 35%. Make sure that you write this down. 35%, which we can say is 35 out of 100, or 35 over 100. So notice it's a fraction. Fractions and percents can be equivalent to each other. So 35, any percent can be written as a fraction, because remember, it's out of 100. So the 100's our denominator. Okay, so you do have this written or this this available for you to cut out and paste in this is my first 10 by 10 grid go ahead and cut it out and you're going to paste it in to show what 35 percent looks like it's already been shaded in for you it's 35 out of 100 pieces go ahead and finish that um, pause if you need to and then we're going to move on okay so example two here we have a tile with a border around it it says the tile has a border around it what percent of the tile has the border. So paste this in, count up your tile pieces, and let's see what that is. And Ms. Charles, if you count that out, do you know how many pieces there are? I think there are 36 tiles. 36 of these tiles out of 100 are um, shaded in. So what would our percentage be? 36 tiles out of 100 would be 36 hundredths. That would be 36 percent. Very good. So we're going to go ahead and write that. 36 out of 100 is the border, so 36 hundredths or 36 percent. Pretty easy so far. Okay, the last little bit that we have on this page is if we use a pie chart. It says percents can also be modeled using pie charts. Here we're going to model 25 percent. Again, make sure that you've written all the information down and we're going to show what 25% looks like on a pie chart. So if we do that, Ms. Sarles, what do you think of as 25%? I think 25%, that reminds me of 25 cents a quarter, so a quarter of a dollar, 25 cents out of the 100 cents in a dollar. Very good. So a whole dollar is 100 cents, 25 is a part of the whole dollar. And how many quarters make up a dollar? Four quarters make up a dollar. Four quarters. So if we're going to make this into a 25%, how many pieces are we going to break our pie into? We need to break it into four pieces. Four pieces. Now remember, they have to be equal pieces, so we need to use the center to break them up. And how many pieces are we going to shade? One. We only have one quarter, 25%. Very good. Okay, so hopefully your first page looks like ours. And in this case, we're going to go on to the next page. So once you've completed this page, go ahead and turn it over. And we're going to have some on the next page. Not on the back side, on the next clean page. We're going to title that Modeling Percents with Benchmarks. Because now we're using benchmarks to help us model percents. And we're not going to use, we're going to use something different. We're not going to use a 10 by 10 grids. We're going to use modeling um, with strip diagrams. So let's talk about what a benchmark is. It says a benchmark percents are percents that are often used and help to solve percents in the real world. So they're, they're percentages that we see often. Um, do you know any examples of benchmark percents? When do we see percents often? Well, we see percents well, like when we are um, having our grades, 
we have 10 problems on a test and they're 10 points each so we would have 10 percent 20 percent 30 percent on like that very good so 10 percent is a really good benchmark and in fact what we have is your other piece that was given to you is six problems with benchmarks on them notice I have one through five listed here so you're gonna cut off the sixth one we're gonna use that in just a second so go ahead and put one through five down here paste it on and we're gonna get started on it this first one is 100 percent what is 100 percent of anything it's the whole piece it's the whole piece so it would be marking the entire bit notice that these are broken up into parts there are 10 sections so each of those sections is 10 percent so I've labeled 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 80 90 and 100 those are good benchmarks because we can use that 10 percent to get us to a lot of places so if it's hundred percent I'm gonna shade that whole thing in okay if we get down to 50%, what do you think of, Ms. Charles, when you hear 50% of something? I think of half of it. Half of it. Okay, so if we start over here at 0%, and over here is 100%, and again, these are in 10% increments, so 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So this is our halfway mark. So 50% of this strip is half of it. And that would be half. Okay. Now we're back to that 25%. And we did that with a pie chart. How are we going to do it with a strip diagram? Well, this is going to look a little different because we are in benchmarks of 10 on the strip. So we're going to have to still mark it 10, 20, 30. But we don't need 30. We need 25. We're going to have to stop halfway between the 20 and 30 and make a different line. Just make another straight line going straight down the middle. All right. So it's between 20 and 30. It's halfway because 25 is halfway between 20 and 30. And we did still use part of that benchmark. But we also talked about what 25% is, and we said it's one-fourth. So we could also take it as one-fourth. Yes. Okay. We're going pretty quick through this. 30%. What can we use for a benchmark if we have 30%, Ms. Arles? We could still use the tens. Okay, so I have 10%, 20%, 30%, and I don't really have to go any further. No. Okay, very good. Our last one is 15%. So notice with each of these, I'm just marking the 0% because that's when nothing's there, and 100% when we have it all. 10%, um, 20%, 30%, that, there's no 15 in there. How do we handle that? Well, we're going to do very similar to what we did up above there. Mm -hmm. We're going to mark the 10% and the 20%. Okay. And 15 is halfway between 10 and 20. So we're going to make another straight line down the middle and block off 15%. Okay. Very good. And you know what? I should go ahead and write 25% here and 15% here. I should have done that back on that first problem. Okay, so we've talked about using a 10 by 10 grid and a pie chart and benchmark percents to help us model percents. What the last thing that we're going to do with this first lesson is over on the opposite side of the page, we are going to be writing our whisk. Remember, that is a summary statement. You are either going to be writing a statement that's in a complete sentence about what we learned in the lesson or you're going to ask a question. Now that question can be, I don't understand something and I need clarification, or it could be formatted uh, like a question that you would have on a quiz, like a question that my, I might ask you. So that's one part that you need to do. The other part is we need to check for understanding. So you have two extra grid pieces that you've been given. You need to paste these in. The first one I just want you to ask, I want to know what percent does that X make of that grid? And the second one, I want you to model 23%. And then if you'll notice at the bottom, we have modeling using a strip diagram. It's asking for 55%. And you have your examples over here on this page. Make sure that you've gotten this all written down, that you complete this, and that you bring your INB back to class tomorrow. All right. Thank you.